this video we will go through how to use the pooled tracking worksheet. The tracking worksheet can be used both before and after you buy your pooled screening library. You can work through the entire sheet before buying to calculate the functional titer in your cell line, optimal transduction conditions and how many cells and plates you'll need. Using the sheet you can estimate the amount of lentiviral particles you'll need. After you buy the pooled library you can refine estimated values to actual values. In this walkthrough, values you estimate will be marked with a red box. The tracking worksheet also provides a personalised protocol for your primary screen and PCR prior to NGS. This worksheet is designed to be used alongside the technical manual. Please refer to this for additional information. The first step is to determine the optimal promoter for Cas9 expression in your cell type. It's important to do this because Cas9 expression levels have a significant effect on gene knockout efficiency. Next, enter the optimal conditions for transduction, which are determined experimentally for the cell line that's going to be used in the screen. The conditions have to be compatible with the screen and they should be the conditions which give the best cell viability. Here are some values for a typical cell line. 0.5% FBS, 16 hour transduction, 10 micrograms per mil polybrine, and 250 cells per millimeter squared. You can see that these values are being added to a personalized protocol in part six. You can use this for your primary screen. Part C is determining the functional titer in your cell line. You will know the exact titer of the pooled library after you've received it, but for now we can use an estimate. You can see in the technical manual that the pooled library titer will be at least 5 times 10 to the 8 transducing units per mil. You can use the non-targeting control to determine the functional titer in your cells. The titer of the non-targeting control sgRNA as measured in HEC 293 T cells, will be on the certificate of analysis. It's important that you determine the functional titer in your cell line of interest experimentally. In this cell line, the functional titer is 2.1 times 10 to the 7 transducing units per mil. The worksheet now calculates the relative transduction efficiency of our cell line, which is 0.48. The sheet also gives us the relative functional titer of the pooled library in the cells. When we receive the library, we can go back and input the real titer of the pooled library instead of our estimate. Next, we determine the antibiotic conditions and durations needed to kill all non-transfected cells. For this cell line, the conditions are 10 micrograms per mil of blastocidin for 14 days and 15 micrograms per mil puromycin for 6 days. Next, we enter the full representation we want. Fold representation is the number of times an sgRNA is represented in the cell population. We recommend doing a minimum of two biological replicates, and we can then look at the details of our pooled library for the number of sgRNAs. For the proteases library, there's one pool of 5,080 sgRNAs. Next, we determine the optimal number of cells for transduction. With 5,080 sgRNAs and 500 fold representation, the tool calculates how many cells we need with lentiviral integrations. We recommend an MOI of 0.3, so that around 26% of cells get one lentiviral integration and the remaining 74% die in selection. To get enough cells with lentiviral integrations, the tool calculates how many cells we need to transduce. Starting with this many cells, at the density that we determined previously and using 10 centimeter dishes, we need eight plates per sample. We want two biological replicates, so that's 16 plates per pool. If we use a different library, these numbers will change. If we use, for example, the whole genome library, which has 18 pools of 10,450 sgRNAs, then we'll need more cells and more plates per pool. Please bear in mind that for this library, there are 18 pools. Now on to section H. We will continue with the smaller proteases library, which has one pool of 5,080 constructs. The tool calculates how many transducing units we'll need and how many microliters of lentiviral particles that will be, taking into account the functional titer. For our two biological replicates, we need 25 microliters of lentiviral particles. If the functional titer of the cell line is lower, then we need more lentiviral particles. We estimated this value at the start of the worksheet. So it is important that you put your experimentally derived functional titer into the worksheet to ensure that you are transducing your cells with the appropriate volume of virus. Now we are on to the primary screen in part C. 
In part 1, we calculate the amount of genomic DNA, primers and reagents needed for PCR prior to NGS. The tool has the number of cells with lentiviral integrations and multiplies it by the amount of DNA in a human diploid cell. The tool calculates the amount of genomic DNA we need to maintain representation of each sgRNA. Then it calculates how many PCR reactions are needed per sample. We have two samples per pool because we have two biological replicates, so we need a total of 41 PCR reactions per pool. The tool calculates how much polymerase we need and is putting this information into a table in part 3 so that you can make your master mix. Part 2 covers multiplexing, which is running multiple samples in one lane. We recommend a minimum of 1000 reads per sgRNA, so the tool calculates the number of output reads required per sample. If the output of your sequencing platform is higher than the number of reads required, you may be able to multiplex. For a sequencing platform with an output of 15 million reads per lane, we get 2.1 sample indices per lane. We need to round this down to a whole number so we can run two samples per lane. For Illumina sequencing, please follow the manufacturer's instructions. For bioinformatic analysis, we have a guide for simple analysis where the abundance of construct is compared between two conditions. You might find this a good foundation for analysing more complex experiments.